I don't like people. They make me mad. Not all of them. I love my mom, my close friends, and am convinced that one of my acquaintances is absolutely perfect, which is an obvious delusion. But people make me angry all too fast. However, I love traveling, something usually associated with extroverts, which I am not. Maybe this passion stems from FOMO, or my enjoyment of just being in the general vicinity of others, like at a concert, without the added pressure to make conversation or entertain. Maybe it's because I'm a Sagittarius. Either way, I find it easier to work, think, and enjoy life when I'm exploring. I know I'm not the only one, so this is a sign to take a drive, visit a new shop, or even book a flight. As I talk about how a change in setting is important to a daily routine and how my realization of this has impacted me positively, I will be packing for Lollapalooza day one and day two. We're driving, so I have limited room in the car and I had to pack light. So this is me showing you all the pieces I'm considering putting in my suitcase. And I wanted to do a packing video, even though it might not translate to the style of video I do currently, because I did one I don't know how many years ago it was, but I did one a long time ago, and I wanted to see if I could replicate that in this new style, so we'll see. So cute! But I don't know why you're on the floor when you could be on the bed. I will not be happy doing something unless I know what I'm getting into. But wait, I just mentioned that I work better in a place I've never been. Well, it's a double-edged sword. My routine is writing my book and video scripts in the morning, filming and editing in the afternoon, and then going to work in the evening, roughly at least. If I have that, then I have a routine. The places I go don't really matter. The biggest lesson that I've learned is that no amount of research is going to tell you what will happen wherever you go. This lesson learned has alleviated an intense amount of anxiety surrounding getting out and about. But I can say this and still research my destinations and activities. But I use that research as a crutch, not a guide. For example, when going to a restaurant, I tend to look up the menu beforehand. However, if there are specials I didn't see, I might choose to get that instead of the meal I planned on getting. Either it seemed more delicious in the moment, something I didn't know I needed, or I know I could come back and try what I was originally going to later. A more recent and real case is my trip to Lollapalooza in Chicago, the trip that I'm packing for in this video. We had a day to explore the city beforehand, and it turned out that we were tired from traveling the day before and wanted to save energy for the festival the day after. So instead, we were able to fall back on our research as a crutch and pick and choose three activities we wanted to do instead of the packed original schedule. In both of these examples, a common theme can be seen. There's a main activity that these choices and sub-activities revolve around. In the first example, it's going to a restaurant. It doesn't matter what you order, as long as you order because you're at a restaurant. In the second, it's Lollapalooza. It didn't matter what I did before, after, or on non-festival days of my trip, as long as I got to the festival. Going farther back, if I were to write somewhere other than home, the writing would be the main activity, and the location wouldn't affect whether or not I did it, hopefully. Identifying this sun to the planets that are your sub-activities can help relieve stress and encourage getting out more. A routine is good, but comfort isn't challenging. So identify the most important parts of your routine and move to the location. Thank me later. A major reason to staying indoors for me specifically is that I have intense social anxiety. I'm not confident in my looks and I'm scared to order food or drinks on my own. My social anxiety can diminish slightly when other people are there to help me function or for me to focus on. There are times when I don't want to interact with people, but do need to feel that sense of purpose you feel when you're around others, though. It's times like these when it's important to create a list of things to tell yourself when you're in a public space. Mine are as follows. 1. Service people will more often than not ask prompting questions. Don't panic if you don't know exactly what you want to buy. 2. You can't get mad at other people for staring if you're a people watcher. That's just hypocritical. And three, Atlas, you have no noticeable features. Strangers aren't going to be able to point you out in a crowd if they witness you doing something awkward or odd. A lot of anxiety involves overthinking. So instead of thinking, just do. Get in a car or walk outside and meander. 
If you end up being too anxious to actually go into a shop or a park, you can just go home, having still gotten a break from the monotonous. For anxiety in general, I'd like to share a way with you that I've learned to calm down. I went to therapy to overcome a phobia, and it was EMDR therapy. While I was skeptical, it did actually work. Essentially, you just have to associate a smell with a happy place. The way I was able to associate the scent of oranges with a calm cottage in the woods was by smelling the scent I wanted, picturing the place, and passing a vibrating object from one hand to the other. You can also just tap your leg in rhythm, I believe. There were certain counts to do, and it, would it was very helpful to verbally identify the happy place. But that was just the gist of it. Now I can carry around orange essential oil and smell it when I need calming down. Over time, I've needed this scent less and less in order to picture this mental place, but the orange is still calming. It's my favorite smell after all. Gimmicks like this can be entirely helpful. Having a comforting object, fidget toy, or a scent to calm you down can be just the thing you need to move out of your fears and into exciting chapters of life. There are many benefits to changing location or getting out and about, like getting more life experiences. But I made this video because I recently lost a passion. Not fully, but it definitely diminished. That was my passion for writing. I don't have to write, it's not my job. I work behind a register for money and plan on becoming a lawyer of some sort in the future. But I want writing to be a big part of my life. It means a lot to me. I've been doing it ever since I was a kid. I want to publish. and. For that, I need passion, something I've been able to renew by looking at my writing in new light, literally. Obviously, it's more difficult to do something if you don't want to do it. The spark you once had for any activity can go out if you do it too much. That's the main reason you have to work with yourself. If you need a change in routine, even if it's slight like moving locations, do that. If you need a like vacation and are able to take one, do that. Go there. No one likes getting burnt out. Each person does things differently, but you can't deny we all need a change of scenery. Here's a list of things to do, ranging from small to large leaps to change your boring old scene. Small, turn your chair or desk to face a different wall. Explore a new part of your workplace. Use an appliance or amenity you have never or don't often use. Medium, visit a new shop. Travel a town over. Go to an annual event. Bonus, dress up for nothing at all and take a walk around town. Large, go on vacation. Find the biggest city within five hour drive and visit for the weekend. Cross off a bucket list adventure. And although it may be painful going back to your normal life after an adventure, always remember that you'll return from the abnormal, appreciating the normal so much more. And that's all I have for you. Make sure to check out my Pinterest and my Etsy. I have a Pinterest for my Etsy as well. And my TikTok. And you can find all of my video scripts on my blog. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next upload. I actually just found a lot of previously unreleased video footage, so maybe I'll be nice and edit those.